He was every bit the legend, with a little touch of Aussie larrikin. Rod Marsh, or iron gloves to his fans, defined a golden generation of Australian cricket. And he'll always be remembered as the wicketkeeper who became part of the nation's folklore. He was part of what was perhaps our most iconic cricketing era. Well, that's gone straight up in the air. Rodney Marsh is underneath it. This will be out. Yes, he's gone. Iron gloves to his fans, backers to his teammates, Rod Marsh, a name that sits comfortably amongst cricket's greats. 350 victims for Marsh. What a nice way to do it. It's a terrible day. Uh, it's the news we didn't want to hear. Uh, Rodney was, one, he was an excellent teammate and he was a very good friend. In Sydney today at a lunch commemorating the infamous underarm match of 1981, Ian Chappell and Jeff Thompson paid tribute to a treasured teammate. Always encouraged everybody, you know what I mean? And, uh, and he was wild and uh, just, just good fun. But it was in partnership with Dennis Lilly that Marsh's impact would stretch beyond the cricket field and into common conversation. Four words burned into the history books. Court Marsh, bowl Lilly. The dismissal Court Marsh, bowl Lilly was recorded 95 times in Test cricket, a number of them here at the MCG. Cricket watchers will tell you there was nothing quite like the atmosphere for that moment in time when Marsh was at the stumps the ball was in Lily's hand and the rumble from the famous Bay 13 could be heard from streets away. Marsh's test career spanned 14 years for 96 test matches and a then record 355 dismissals for a wicketkeeper, a mark passed by Ian Healy in 1998. I actually uh, captured Rod's world record at the ground they're playing at this afternoon um, at Rowell Pindi and he found a way to get a a bottle of champagne in the middle of Royal Pindi in a Muslim country to me. You know, how good's that? Marsh was among the trailblazers who signed on for Kerry Packer's World Series in the 1970s, forcing the establishment to concede and pay players better, a move that would benefit generations to come. Marsh also credited as the first leader of the Australian Test Team song, Under the Southern Cross, a tradition that continues today. The song, the team song, David Boone handed it to me, Rod Marsh had handed it to him, and uh, I handed it to Ricky Ponting. Also among those paying tribute, Bill Laurie, who captained Australia the day Marsh received his baggy green. Well, my earliest memory is when he was picked to play in the um, Brisbane Test match when I was uh, captain, and uh, he came across from Western Australia, and from then on he developed into be one of the um, great all-around cricketers. That was November 1970, and as Bill phoned in today, the now 85-year-old says he continued to admire the West Australian as his own playing career finished, and Laurie took up his iconic role behind the microphone. He enjoyed every minute of his life. He didn't leave anything in the, in the pocket or the garage. Well, one of those uh, lucky guys that's just got natural ability and got flair about him and enjoyed life. Marsh dedicated his life to cricket. After hanging up the gloves, he would establish the Australian Cricket Academy, nurturing our future greats. He influenced some of the most successful cricketers we've had in the last 30 years. The likes of Shane Warne, you know, Glenn McGrath, uh, Ricky Ponting. Later establishing a similar program in England, putting the health of the game above all else. It's important that all countries are competitive and that the game does continue as a result of that. He would return to Australia as a national selector and until recently as a director of Cricket South Australia. Marsh's commitment to the sport he loved lasting until the end. When he suffered his eventually fatal heart attack, the 74-year-old was in Bundaberg on a fundraising drive for Cricket's next generation. Well, I think uh, Australian cricket will be grateful that we saw Rod Marsh for so long and he entertained us, certainly entertained the public. He was a tremendous big hitter of the game. Some days he'd have a big swipe and go, and we'd go over the grandstand. Next day he'd have a swipe and he'd get knocked over. He'd just turn and smile and go off the ground. I, I would think that Rod would say he's had a great life and he enjoyed every moment of it. Vale Rod Marsh, a man who fit the culture of Australian cricket like a glove. Very well said. And our thoughts tonight are with Rod's wife, Roz, and his whole family.